As Stadium Championship Series East rumbled into Houston, the tacky track at NRG Stadium created chaos and carnage. Bad angle, oh! The professor continued to rise to the occasion, winning another freestyle and adding to his legacy as the greatest to ever ride in the hallowed halls of Houston. While Tyler Menega continued his dominant start, laying waste to the field and leading Gravedigger to yet another event championship. Oh! -ho -ho! This is round seven. This is Monster Jam. And here we go! Final quarter, England's got it! And he is your racing champion! Oh, can he get the save? And he's got it! Going up! Oh, yeah! He's going high! That is a Leduc leap off the container! With the combination move! Oh my goodness! Huge hair, and he's gonna make the save! We are back at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas, a capacity crowd on hand for round seven of the Monster Jam season. He is a seven deuce deuce, Adam Entignap. I'm Scott Jordan. And last round, Tyler Menega was the overall event championship here on Stadium East. He's the only event champion that we've had on this series. So three for three, four for four, if you count the Superstar Challenge. Can he be stopped? I mean, it doesn't seem like it right now. Tyler has one of the main ingredients that makes a championship and gets you the win, and that's consistency. At the last round, he ended up third place in skills, and he still got the event championship. He seems to be unstoppable, and he wasn't even happy with that. He wants to win everything, Scott. Well, he might actually win everything if he keeps it up. <laughs> uh, Tom Mance won his second freestyle of the season. And, and in those wins, we, we've seen vintage Tom. He seems to be laying it all in line, having some fun in his final season. Can he hold up? Can the truck hold up? Yeah, I think you said it right there, Scott. It's can the truck hold up? The breakages are what's going to hinder him from being the best Tom that he can be. But one of the advantages that he does have is that he's such a veteran. He knows that truck like the back of his hand. He's going to kind of know when the breakages are coming. So he definitely has an advantage in that sense. Uh, Tristan England still keeping JCB Digatron within striking distance. We've also seen some good stars from John Gordon, Ryan Disharoon, but Bryce Kenny flying under the radar a little bit. He's in third place in the points. Uh, what do you uh, anticipate Bryce doing here tonight? And what does he have to do to put pressure in the two drivers in front of him in the standings? Well, I anticipate that his main focus has got to be on freestyle. He has to come out on top in freestyle if he wants to get that event championship. In two-wheel skills, he's been a little bit lackluster. In racing, he's definitely been the best. He needs to carry that momentum from the beginning of the night all the way to the end of the night and make sure he comes out on top. Well, let's join Leslie Mears, who's down on the track with the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior driver. Leslie. Sometimes it's the smallest shift that can make the biggest difference. And Bryce, for you, like this year, I feel like you're more relaxed than you've ever been. And so what's that little shift that you've made coming into this season? I think it's just keeping everything in perspective. You know, I mean, I think that the best part about being a Monster Jam driver is that we come out here, we, we push these trucks to their limits every single time. Uh, but you also can't control the reactions of the fans. You can't control what the scores are going to be. All you can do is drive as hard as you can and uh, make sure you put the truck in the best position to have that wow moment. And so here we are, what, our, this is our fourth event of the season, and we've already had multiple wow moments. And so for me as a driver, that's all it is. Just go out there and make every stab of the throttle count. This track, it, it invites wow moments because there's all these different things that'll trip us up as drivers. And so the opportunity's there, but you gotta have the guts to roll the dice. You gotta have the guts to risk a little bit. And, uh, but you know what, that's what Monster Jam's all about. That's what I'm here for. Thanks, Leslie. We're going to take a look now at the driver lineup for tonight's action. Three different winners last round. Adam, who is next to join those three drivers in the winner's circle? I mean, I think it's about time for Cole Bernard to have that big breakout. Last round, he really seemed like he stepped it up and had some confidence. He had three racing wins, and he's 19-9 and nine is his record. One overall win last year. I think it's about time. Let's take a look at the current season points. Standings, Tyler Menega up top with 98. Tristan England in second. Bryce Kenny third. Tom Mintz in fourth. And John Gordon currently sits in fifth. Drivers will compete tonight in three competitions. JCB Racing, the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and Freestyle. Points are awarded based on finish. 12 goes to the winner. And the driver with the most points at the end of the event is crowned the event champion. 
It's time now for Track Talk. Adam, something about the dirt here in Houston. Some drivers say it's hard packed. Others say it can be a little squishy. Either way, it ruts up fast in the race lanes. How do drivers attack that tonight? You know, it's going to be very difficult. One of the things they're going to have to do is line their truck up correctly and early with the ruts. And what I mean by that is get the truck lined up with the rut and come into the corner a little bit wider or a little bit more inside so that truck sits directly in the middle of that rut. Check out the JCB Racing Bracket, Megalodon Lucas Stabilizer, El Toro Local Max, the Black Pearl Jester, Greg Clips Mohawk Warrior, and the Rod Ryan Show in round one. Grave Digger, Digatron, Shaker, and Bad Company in round two. Adam, let's talk about that first race, Todd LaDuke and Charlie Pauk, and that's going to be a good one. Yeah, these are two drivers that love the tacky dirt. Charlie has a racing win here before, but Todd has won 20 races in his career on this track, so it's going to be one to watch. Let's get to the track at NRG Stadium. The first race is Todd LaDuke and Megalodon, Charlie Pauk, and Lucas Stabilizer. Before the race, we check in with Leslie. Guys, we saw this track be so tacky in the first round here at Houston. And for Todd LaDuke, he said he's got to learn to crab walk around the corners. That's the way you're going to alleviate that issue. you got to lead with the rear steer. Thanks, Leslie. So crab walking is dominant with the rear steer, but using both steer to kind of inch your way around the corners. And right now we see a close one here. Charlie Pawkin has a slight advantage into the final corner we go. It looked like Todd LaDuke had an advantage coming out of the inner circle, but Todd LaDuke at the end gets the win. And that race went back and forth, back and forth. Megalodon advances. You can see right here, Todd LaDuke making up so much time on that blue lane side, but did he get both front wheels on the race ramp? Official word is he did. Megalodon moves on. Right now, we continue round one. The professor, Tom Mentz, Max D, Jamie Garner, in El Toro Loco, Tom in his career at NRG Stadium, 45 and 15 with seven racing wins. Jamie Garner pulls at the starting line, and we have a green light here in Houston. And El Toro Loco off the starting line a little faster. Max D has caught up inside the berm. Round and round we go, and it is El Toro Loco out to the corner first. Jamie came out so fast out of that second inner corner, but Tom Mentz making up a little bit of time on the blue side. Jamie Garner had an issue on the far side of that track in the gray lane. Tom Mentz making him pay. It's going to be close to the finish here. Tom Mentz, Max D barely getting across first. And Max D advances. Take a look at the replay. Oh, it's so close right here. Oh, Tom Mentz barely getting it by a tread on that BKT tire, Scott. Next matchup, Bryce Kenny is awaiting here on one side. Mike Pagliarulo and the Rod Ryan show on the other one. I love what Mike and Matt Pagliarulo have done. They, they traded bodies here. We had Jester and the Rod Ryan show and Kraken and the Rod Ryan show. So it's a tomfoolery thing. But now we got Rod Ryan against Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. And I don't know what Mike Pagliarulo is doing. He's trying to take a shortcut across the pod. <laughs> well, the Rod Ryan show thinks it's freestyle right now. But he actually does come to a complete stop which isn't going to hinder the racetrack for Bryce Kenny, allowing him to get a good lap and hopefully lane choice. Man, at this point, they just had to make him stop. He won't get lane choice, though. Remember, the first round buys do get lane choice. Next round, Bryce yes. Kenny still gets a great time in there. 27, 8, 8, 3, the super glue glue to the action replay. Rod Ryan, it looks like that dirt is starting to dry up a little bit, maybe getting a little slippery, goes high on the berm and spins out. Our final race in round one. Next up out of Murdo, South Dakota, Covenard in the Black Pearl. And he goes up against Osteen, Florida's Matt Pagliarulo and Jester. Cole made it to the finals here last round. We'll see if he can do it again. One spot up for grabs in round two. Here goes Cole Bernard. Nice center lane there for the Black Pearl. Didn't go up too high, but he caught him right here on the inside part of that berm. And Matt Pagliarulo has the lead. Two mistakes in a row, two races in a row in the same corner, Scott. Matt has to slow up a little bit. He goes too far wide right on that race ramp. But Cole Bernard so far behind right now. Not enough track for him to catch up. And an upset here, Adam, in Houston. Matt Pagliarulo advances. You can see him. He just grabs the inside of that pod with the BKT and gets up on that one wheel. Can't lay the power down. Has to back out of it and loses time. Let's take a look at the JCB racing bracket as we head into round two. Grave Digger, Megalodon, JCB Digatron, Max D, Shaker Jester, Bad Company, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior, Max D with the fastest time. Coming up, Tyler Meninga looks for a second racing win in a row. Grave Digger is next on Monster Jam. 
Monster Jam is brought to you by JCB, the official heavy equipment partner of Monster Jam. Welcome back to Houston, Texas for the second round of JCB Racing. And it's the series points leader Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger up against Tyler Duke in Megalodon. For more on this track, let's go to Leslie. Guys, keep your eyes on the drivers as they come out of that gray lane into that corner. It is very, very ruddy down there. And you'll notice that the drivers who are taking the wins in the rounds are the ones who hit that first because it's so inconsistent out there. One of the things they said they had to watch was the running up in the corners, and it's definitely happening out of the gray lane. Thank you, Leslie. We see some gray lane issues right there from Todd LaDuke. He goes up on two wheels, gets out of Tyler Medica's way. Huge lead right now for Gravedigger. Yeah, and you can tell if you look at that center pod, that right lane where the gray side is, it's just so much darker with the dirt, meaning it's tackier, and that left one's a little slicker, making a big difference. The race lanes flip-flop here in the next yes. round, so a lot of truck issues going on there as the trucks continue to run up that dirt. Tyler Meninga, 26.559, he moves on. Here we go, Megalodon just grabbing that dark dirt right there, and you can see the groove where Megalodon caught it, just got up on those BKTs and couldn't stay in the throttle. Little shake up here in our next match. Uh, Max D having some battery issues, trying to get started. He's not going to get out onto the racetrack in time. So Jamie Gardner gets a second chance in El Toro Loco, and he will square off with Tristan England and JCB Digatron. Off the start line, nice start for both drivers here, about even as we get to that halfway point inside the berm. Jamie Garner, great lane, goes up with the back two wheels. He's got a straight shot. And Tristan England oh, slowing down. Yeah, something's going on with Tristan. It looks like he has some power loss. Might be a planetary gear or maybe even an inner outer axle. Something's going on with JCB Digatron. He's out of the way. Jamie Garner now going to try to finish and finish strong. He does. El Toro Loco moves on 26.748. Being told up here, it's a transmission issue. Howie Dalton heading back, and JCB Digatron going to head to the back to get that worked on. Next up, Ryan Disharoon and Shaker, Matt Pagliarulo and Chester. Ryan off to a solid start in racing this year, five and three. Yeah, definitely a solid start. He's liking that new truck. Something I love about those Metal Shop boys is they do everything in house. They touch every single part. From outside the berm here, now Shaker gets there first, goes wide. Matt giving him everything he's got, though. Matt hanging tall here with Ryan Disharoon. Ryan in that blue lane now up over the race ramp. About a half a truck distance here as we get into that final corner for Shaker. Matt grabbing two pods in a row and then spinning out, getting up on those BKTs, gets out of his groove, and Ryan Disharoon coming away with the win. Here you can see he just gets off into that fluff, the cushion we like to call it. He grabs a handful of throttle and just spins out, gets up on those BKTs and can't recover. Final matchup in round two, John Gordon in bad company out of Hiram, Georgia. Up against Bryce Kenny, Gray Clips Mohawk Warrior. Bryce seven and two on the year, John three and three. And here we go, green light. It is John Gordon in bad company going center lane on the berm. Bryce Kenny as well. He goes up a little high with the back two wheels. Bad company has the lead. Bad company starting off on the worst lane. If he can come out in front, he's going to have a good advantage. Oh, Bryce Kenny makes a big mistake. And not only that, he is going to impede bad company. So bad company will not finish the run, will not get a time, and will not get lane choice in the semifinals. Here's the replay. So close to where Matt made that mistake in the prior run. Gets on the throttle a little bit too much, and the rear comes around. Checking on the bracket. A lot of DNFs here so far. Houston living up to its reputation. Grave Digger, El Toro Loco, Shaker, Bad Company. Fastest time last round. Tyler Meniga, 26.559. We are down to the final four trucks. Stay with us as we crown our JCB Racing winner next. Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips, the official hair salon of Monster Jam. Download the Great Clips app and check in online today. Welcome back to NRG Stadium for the JCB Racing Semifinals. Up first, Tyler Meninga, Grave Digger, Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco. And for more on Jamie's racing mentality, let's go to Leslie. It was funny, I was talking to Jamie Garner earlier today, and he said, hey, my truck is good. The truck can win every round out there, but it's the driver that's the problem. He said he gets so giddy in the seat because he wants to win so badly that that's when he makes mistakes. It just goes to show that racing is purely mental. Thank you, Leslie. Tyler's only loss this season, Adam, was to Jamie Garner. 
And Gravedigger, though, big lead out of the berm. Break checks it across the pod. Yeah, it does not look like Tyler's going to lose this one. He is on. He is just riding this track perfect right now. Got to finish strong here in the final corner. Gravedigger across the race ramp. And Gravedigger gets the win. Jamie made it interesting. Tyler Medica moves on. Jamie in those last two turns makes it interesting, stays tight, but can't make up the ground. 26.189, the fastest time so far of the night. Next up, John Gordon in bad company up against Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. Winner advances to take on Tyler Menega in the JCB Racing Finals. We got a green light here in Houston, and it is John Gordon getting the push off the starting line. That's two times in a row for John Gordon. Oh, it looks like Shaker's up on two wheels. John got a little chippy, though, across that race pod out of the berm. He does have the lead, though, into that drift corner. You can feel the pressure on this race. They know this is to get to the finals. Right now, Ryan has the lead, but he makes another mistake with a bad bounce. He went too high off the ramp. John Gordon clips the pot, goes off the ramp. We got to check in, and Ryan Disharoon going to get the win. John Gordon didn't get the front two wheels down. Take a look at the replay. Yeah, it looks like he grabs that pod, and those two front wheels did not get on the race ramp, and he will get a penalty for that. Final matchup is set. Tyler Menega in Grave Digger. Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. Tyler continues to get faster. He had the fastest time of the night in that last round. And Tyler does get lane choice over Ryan Disharoon. He does take the gray lane side. Smart move there for Tyler Menega. And he's coming in here riding a five race winning streak. And we are set at the starting line. The finals have begun. It is Menega versus Disharoon, 12 points on the line. And Tyler Menega making easy work of this berm. Ryan Disharoon, all kinds of issues. It just seems like every time these drivers get up next to Tyler Menega, they put too much pressure on themselves and they make a costly mistake and give Tyler an easy win. They cannot do that. Tyler Meninga doesn't even have to try right now, and he's going to get the win. Let's take a look at the original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. Right here, just goes a little wide, gets that right front tire up and over that berm, and it just drags him along the outside, costing him too much time. For Tyler, this is his third racing win of the season. He is on the track with Leslie. Thanks, guys. We saw how tricky this track was out here tonight. Not only did you have some issues where you had to go to the pits with the rear steer, but you had to maneuver the ruts that were out here on the track before you guys even started racing. Absolutely. And, you know, I still don't know what's going on in the rear steer. Sometimes the rear steer turns, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, luckily, we don't need that for two-wheel skills, so we're going to get through that. Maybe do a little diagnosing in the back. And, honestly, I can probably rip a freestyle without rear steer, too. So, you know what? We had a great start of the night. As long as we can get that under our belt, that racing win, uh, the rear steer really isn't the biggest factor the rest of the Tonight. Yeah, you're talking about it an awful lot, though, so I really think it's weighing on your mind, though. It's not, I promise you. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. 12 points come with that win. We get our first look at the BKT overall point standing. Shaker with 11, El Toro Loco with 10, Bad Company 9, and Megalodon with 8. So, Max D, we talked about that battery issue that Tom Metz had that took him out of the racing competition. Let's get an update with Leslie. Maxi wouldn't start when it tried to go to line for racing, so they brought it back to the back, got the voltage meter out, and what they found out is that there was no juice coming from the batteries, and it takes a lot of power to run everything on this Monster Jam truck. And so for the purposes of time, what they're doing here is they're just replacing one of the batteries. You can see a good spark there, so we got some juice in that one to try to get back in a competition. Thanks, Leslie. We will keep that situation updated here throughout the night. Next up in Houston was a great clip skills challenge. Drivers could attempt two moves on two wheels, or they could choose to do a donut. Each driver was judged by fans on creativity, skill, and execution. And with 12 points on the line, let's take a look back at our top five. Coming in that fifth spot, bad company, John Gordon, big time nose wheelie. A nice little popper to get that thing up. Throws it into the nose wheelie, stands it up on the middle pod so the whole crowd can see it. You got to love that. In Fortress in England, JCB Digatron, he has a new transmission, hits a quadruple combo move here. <laughs> throws it in the nose wheelie, then throws it in the moonwalk, then back to the wheelie right here, and then he's going to wheelie up the back of the step up. We see this so often from Tristan England, but he does it so well. Back to the nose wheelie, and we'll see if he gets another moonwalk, or is he going to drive it out here? He looks like he's going to get another moonwalk, Scott. Could have done a few more things there. Yeah. There's plenty of time yeah, left there. Yeah, why not throw in another combination? Yeah, four, five, six, here it goes. <laughs> Try to get teeter-totter, shades of Earthshaker there. So good. 8.801.
in third todd ledoux trademark bicycle got a little bicycle combination move i love the way he turns that front wheel and then hits the brakes Pops it up, throws it into reverse. Nice combo. Tyler Medica takes second after his win. He gets a moonwalk to Wheelie and Grave Digger. Very similar to what Tristan England did. Little nose wheelie and then moonwalk. Just, you know, dances up that pod so slow. 12,000 pounds. Those huge BKT tires. Just absolutely amazing what these drivers can do in these trucks. They make those wheelie bars special on Gravedigger. We see that a lot throughout the league. 9.356. And getting the win, Tom Mez Adam with your favorite move, the donkey kick in Maxi. <laughs> the donkey kick. Check this out. Just does, like, jumps off, gets a little pop from that rebound on the truck, hits the brakes, throws it into a nose wheelie, and then into a moonwalk. Fantastic display of technicality from the professor. As it should. 9.527 for Tom Mance. That gets the win. Fans in Houston letting Tom have it here. Incredibly popular driver throughout his career, and he gets his first skills win of the season. As we take a look at the BKT overall point standings, Gravedigger still out front with 23. Megalodon and Shaker with 18. Bad Company 17. And Max D with 16 points. Two competitions down, one to go. Gravedigger is on top, and Freestyle is next on Monster Jam. Everyone at Monster Jam is proud to be partners with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Become a partner in hope and receive a custom St. Jude Monster Jam. This shirt saves lives t-shirt. Text Monster Jam to 785-833 or visit stjude.org forward slash Monster Jam to learn more. Welcome back to NRG Stadium for round seven of the Monster Jam season. Two great competitions so far. Tyler Menega picks up the racing win. Tom mentioned and everybody why he is a two-time World Final Skills champion. Which win do you think was more impressive? I mean, unfortunately, I got to go with Tyler. Those six races in a row. And then last year, he had a double-digit streak in racing. Faster is faster. And Tyler gets it done on the racetrack. There's no judgment call. It is what it is. And he gets it done. Tyler Duke and Ryan Disharoon are challenging for the event championship. Todd has had a quiet start to his season. Ryan's been a little more consistent. Who have you been more impressed with tonight? You know, I've, I've definitely been impressed with both drivers, but I'm leaning a little bit towards Ryan Disharoon just because that new truck and chassis that he's built, it makes him feel so comfortable. When I watch him, the truck is being so smooth. It's not having any weird kind of ejection from the suspension or anything like that, and it's settling very well, and he looked confident in that truck. So to me, the consistency from Ryan DeSharoon is very nice to see. Let's catch you up on the BKT overall point standings after two. Grave Digger is out in front with 23. Megalodon is Shaker with 18. Bad Company with 17. And Max D with 16. Speaking of Max D, Tom had the big skills win. Before we get to freestyle, let's check in with Leslie in the 14-time world champion. Tom, it was crazy in the back. You were trying to get the battery out so that you had some power, yet you were still able to get back in the truck and be so composed to do all your maximum moves to take the win. Well, you know, trying to diagnose it is troublesome. You know, it's winter time. It's cold outside. We have a crew guy sick. I had to get out and help Wyatt. He's doing a great job, but man, two heads are always better than one. She's fixed. She's ready to go. She's 100%. It's to the max. And you stayed in the 12th position when you could have moved up because you won freestyle at the last event. Why are you going dead last? That's what it's all about. It's about going last. Max D, baby, say the best for last. All right, thank you, Leslie. Let's take a look at the freestyle run order. Let's talk about Tom's decision there, Adam. We see a lot of drivers, when they win freestyle, they like to go up into that eighth or ninth spot just because they can have a better opportunity to get the first backflip in. Tom said, you know what? I'm going to go last. I'm going to close the show. I don't care what happens in front of me. What do you make of that? I mean, he's won nine times in this building, which is the most of all time. Tom Mintz is setting himself up for a maximum moment at the end of this freestyle competition. What a way to go out. A lot of history here for him uh, in Houston with the old Astrodome with Goldberg and Team Mintz and now with Energy Stadium and Maximum Destruction bringing that body back out to, to show sort of a, a vintage Tom Mintz. I'm feeling vintage Tom Mintz. I feel like <laughs> we're back in 2003 in a time machine. Let's go ahead and get down to the track. Freestyle begins with Matt Pagliarulo and Jester.
So we talk about the last spot. Let's talk about the first spot. I've been impressed with what Matt's done here tonight. We know that the entire team have had some EFI issues so far with putting the EFI systems into their Tom Fullery Monster Jam trucks. But Matt has really started to put an event together and been a little more consistent. And I think this is a good jumping off point for Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, you know, when you make such big changes like EFI, it takes a little bit to get used to. It takes the mechanics a little bit of time to get it adjusted correctly. And it seems like it's finally mending well with Jester and Matt. So hopefully in this freestyle, we'll see something big and we'll see a little bit of comfort. Jester skying it up across that pod, the outside portion of that berm. And right here, right in a good spot on the center track. And now we talk about the berms in the racetrack. When you're talking about freestyle, they become more of, of landmines out there, more of jammers, more things to slow drivers down, more things for them to hit, just like Matt right there off the ramp with some nice air. Yeah, that was a beautiful air, but for sure the inside of this track is such a nuisance for these drivers because if you don't get it lined up just right you're coming up short and if you go too long then all of a sudden that next berm's coming up really quickly and it's a jammer it's difficult for sure now matt pagliarulo is going up here for the backflip so we're going to see a backflip from jester <laughs> i love go. this right out of the gate first run first backflip We'll see if he can land it. Here goes Jester right up onto the container. Goes over. Pogo bounce on the front two wheels, and he's got the landing. Nice, solid run from Jester. Here he comes into that backflip. You can see he just didn't hit the throttle as hard as he needed to up that backflip container. Under rotates, but pulls it off and lands on all four BKTs just fine. Here comes two-time World Finals champion Tyler the Duke in Megalodon. He is in the conversation for the event championship, trailing Tyler Menning about five points. Everything really changed for him when he got behind the wheel of Megalodon. We saw him for so many years in Metal Militia and Monster Energy. He's going right for the backflip oh, okay. at the gate. Okay, Todd. You got anything to say about that one? <laughs> yeah, get the <laughs> crowd excited. That was a Let's good one. Go. Man, 7.848 to score to be right out of the starting gate. He comes in for the backflip ramp. But I think we were spoiled in Todd Leduc's career with those years as a World Finals champion, going back to back with Metal Militia and Monster Energy with the series wins. Ever since he's been in Megalodon, he's really had some vision issues trying to get used to the truck. I'd like to see Todd be able to really free himself up here and let the truck eat. Yeah, and I think Todd has been trying to do that, but you sometimes it's just hard. You get into a little bit of a funk and one thing goes wrong and then the next thing goes wrong and the next thing, and it's hard to get that mentality. It's hard to get your crew chief on the same page and get that momentum going. Here he goes into a nice little bicycle combination move. It's a stabby on the back end. Great run here for Todd Ledoux. Take a look at the original super glue. Blue to the action replay. Here he comes in with the early backflip, getting the crowd on their feet. Great rotation for Todd Ledoux. Comes up a little bit sideways on those BKTs, but nothing too crazy. Has a nice save. And then right here, hits him with the bicycle. Little technical move to end the run. Hits the brakes, turns the front wheels to the right. Nice combination to end out that freestyle. 8.418. Todd LaDuke is on top of the freestyle leaderboard, but will it lead to the championship? Find out next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to NRG Stadium. Earlier today, fans were at the pit party, walking the track, meeting the drivers, and taking pictures with all the Monster Jam trucks. It's always a lot of fun at the pit party, so make sure you get your tickets at monsterjam.com, and we'll see you there. During the break, Mike Pagley, ruler Rod Ryan Show, did not meet the requirements, would not get a score, as he just sends Rod Ryan Show flying out of the dirt here at NRG Stadium. And then Ryan Disharoon and Shaker, another DNF. We saw that a lot last round. Nice wheelie there, but no time for the score and no score for Ryan Disharoon. Up next, Tristan England and JCB Digatron. He's dealt with some truck issues today with the transmission. For more on list, let's check back in with Leslie Mears. Guys, Tristan England is very intentional with his first move in freestyle. He likes to do a slap wheelie out there for two reasons. Not only is it a wow movement for the fans, but it's also a great way to check those shocks to make sure that they're set and right for the rest of his line. If they feel good on the slap wheelie, he knows he's ready to rock it out get some big air. Yeah, thanks, Leslie. You can't have shock issues in freestyle run and expect to really do what you want to do, so nice to test them out. We see a lot of drivers doing that. They get a couple jumps here to see how they're feeling, and then they know they can either go big or go home. And Tristan England right onto the transfer. Gets low center of gravity in the truck, keeps the throttle going, and he's got JCB Digatron on a run here. And I think 
one of the things, just to go a little bit more in depth about that checking the shocks, the reason he's doing that is a lot of these drivers actually run a softer shock setup for racing than they do in freestyle. And what they have to do is stiffen those shocks up for those big hits they have to have. And if it doesn't feel right and it's a little bit too soft, you'll get those bad rebounds and you'll have to watch it more than if it's stiff enough. So that's something he's checking out and making sure is just right so he can go big. Looking for that first stadium freestyle win in JCB Digatron. He did have 25 freestyle wins a year ago on Arena Championship Series West. This could be a win right here. Gets the backflip ramp, a short one, a short spin around, and he has got it up on two wheels and back across the berm. And he did something that was so technical and fantastic right there. He did a backflip, under rotated, and then threw it in reverse to get that under rotation to kind of flatten out. Nice job, Tristan. And another big air. Great awareness there flying off the right side of that ramp to avoid the jammer that keeps the speed going a little outside of the boundary line. He's got to turn this thing inside, gets it up over the step up, down grease in the wheels on the FMX side. Now right back in over the near side berm, back again, tries a little bit of room here to turn this thing around. Now he's got to chip away at the dirt, avoid Megalodon, and come right back over to this side. You can see him hitting the brakes. Ooh, a nice little slap really added to the freestyle run there at the end, all the way across the stadium. Great run for Tristan England. Check out the replay. Okay, so here he comes into the backflip. Watch for a little bit of under rotation, but see how he throws it in reverse right there, and then he drives backwards and able to get that truck settled down. Next out, Cole Vinard in the Black Pearl. Cole started to find his groove last round in Houston on this track. Let's check back in with Leslie Mears. Scott, when I asked Cole Vinard about Houston, he said, I love this track. This is my dirt. And he said, what makes it even better this weekend is there's a new design on the back ramp and so there's additional ramps out there it's a little bit taller and he said what it does out there is it makes it a little bit more forgiving he's hoping that this is going to be the ramp that's going to let him walk the plank a little easier we'd love to see him walk the plank he's done it before in houston he has two career freestyle wins at nrg stadium it's one of the most dynamic moves in all of monster jam but he has struggled a bit in freestyle the early part of this season his highest finish was third, but other than that, sixth last round and a 10th place finish. So he's really trying to find his rhythm when it comes to these two minute freestyle runs. Well, speaking of rhythm, Cole really has it going on. He's got a lot of momentum right now. I love the way he's throttling around the track and getting to the next jump. He's driving this track a little bit more aggressive than the other drivers are. And I think he notices that the track is drying out so he can kind of whip that truck around and not have to worry about how tacky the dirt is here in Houston. And we've realized so far with this Houston crowd, it's not just going to be a backflip that takes the win. Uh, Tristan England had a backflip 8.474, as you can see, is the score for him. So they're scoring low here. They want to see something. They want to see that carnage. And now he's starting to heat up. The Black Pearl starting to heat up, starting to get higher and higher off these ramps. Man, such good track awareness there. You see him hit the brakes on top of that pod, avoid that jammer on the backside, get the truck settled down. And here he goes. Is he going to throw it in reverse? We're going for a reverse backflip here. This will be huge if he can land it, if he can land it. Something special. Black Pearl coming in in reverse off the back oh! lip. He's got one, oh! and he's going for two here. Oh, could not get the back-to-back -back lip, but he does hit a reverse. That's what the fans want to see. Check out the replay. Coming into it in reverse. Guys, these trucks do not have rear view mirrors. This is such a technical move. Not quite enough throttle up that backflip ramp, but a heck of a try from Cole Bernard. Cole Bernard has just taken the lead, but will the Black Pearl hang on? More freestyle is next on Monster Jam. Monster Jam is brought to you by Spin Master. Monster trucks, monster stunts, monster jam. Welcome back to NRG Stadium in Houston. We continue on with Stadium Championship Series East. And during the break, Charlie Pawkin came out in Lucas Stabilizer. He would roll right oh, into oh. a jammer, 6.937. Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco did not fare any better. El Toro Loco with front axle issues will leave 30 seconds on the clock, 6.859. That leads us to the man out of Hiram, Georgia. This is John Gordon in bad company. I want to go back to Cole's run here for a second. A reverse backflip 
Adam, still seemingly unimpressive to the fans <laughs> here in Houston. I don't know what they want to see, Scott, but obviously it's something new. Hopefully it's that holographic body that John Gordon I think has. it's because he didn't land the second backflip. Oh, that's what, that was. Was that's what it was. Bad coveny break check, floater up on that ramp side of the FMX. Another floater jump. He's just chopping away here, going from one side of the track to the other. And you touched on this earlier. When you have a stadium layout like this, it does make it really difficult for drivers to get momentum, to get a lot of speed. It really becomes more about awareness and how you're landing off the ramp. So this is a, a, a thinker's mentality here. You really have to plot some of your runs out and look at where other drivers are landing and what they're hitting. Yeah, it definitely is that mentality to work a little bit smarter out here. And the reason that is, is because this track is actually a little shorter than normal, but it's a little wider than normal as well. So that's why you see a lot of these drivers working the outside of the track and not jumping onto the pod as much. Big time oh, air big for air. Bad there we Company. Go. A little awkward on the landing. It's a bicycle, is able to get it back on all four BKTs, comes across again. So John Gordon not letting anything stop him. And he does have to get gingerly across so he doesn't hit Megalodon. And Megalodon in a bad place. That's now the third <laughs> truck that is uh, seemingly almost run into Tyler Duke's truck. Great wheelie, slap wheelie combo. Nice slap wheelie combo. Gets it slowed down soon enough so he doesn't have to hit reverse. Good job, John. A little bit of cross threading there. John put together his best event last round in Houston, finishing in second. Okay, the boxes that haven't been checked is a big air and a backflip here, Scott. He's running out of time. Well, John loves the eight pack, so we'll see if that comes into play. John going for the container this time. Nice push off the back two wheels. That's going to cost him over. Oh! And trying to get oh, it on the sidewalls, oh, and he makes oh, the save. That's the it. save of the night. And maybe the save of the year, John Gordon coming for that score. Wow, a little pirouette with a sidewall save, and then a big air right there off that race lane to finish off the run. Nice job, John. Biggest save of the night, biggest air of the night. Great run there for Bad Company. Take a look at the replay. Comes in here, under rotates, he knows, hits the gas in the air, grabs those front BKTs a little awkward, and then lands on the bumper, rolls over, kind of does a cartwheel, gets on the sidewalls, has the truck awareness, throttles out from those sidewalls. Oh my gosh. That was unbelievable, Scott. They are impressed by that, Adam. 9.45. <laughs> there we go. I told you, they wanted the carnage. They wanted the save. John Gordon just gave it to him, and he has the lead. Next out is Great Clips Mohawk Warriors, Bryce Kenny. He's got, always talks about muscle memory. He talked to Leslie about this. Let's check in with her right now. Bryce feels like he's finally got his muscle memory back in the truck. And you got to remember, he was off for a few months. And so not in the truck, not making those leaps, not checking those brakes in the air and doing those things. He said just being back in action for three events and also sitting in the truck and watching everybody else in freestyle has really reignited that for him. And one of the big things that people have to understand, what he's talking about is getting that muscle memory back that's different than other sports. These guys don't get to practice during the week. They have to take the whole entire week off. And these machines are so high performance and so special that they can only be driven just on the weekend. So they don't get a lot of time to get comfortable in these trucks. And when they do get practice, they don't get to practice freestyle. They get racing rounds that they can run. They can do a couple skills challenge moves, but they do not get to do anything freestyle style related in practice so it really is coming out and try to be fresh and try to keep something interesting so it does have a lot to do with feeling this track out in previous rounds there's your score to beat 9.455 john gordon bad company truck looks like it's clocked a little bit to the left he could get it right back square this way nice wheelie combo gets off to oh, the side carnage. and he's trying oh. to get the cartwheel but man look at that front end of that truck just going down take a look at the replay Watch him right here. He gets the side of that freestyle landing ramp and just turns the truck and one of those four link bars just snaps right off. Here's your current freestyle leaderboard after 10 trucks. Bad Company with the lead. Black Pearl in second. JCB Digatron in third. A bad Company has taken the lead, but still two more trucks to come. Grave Digger and Max, they hit the track next. We are back with more freestyle at NRG Stadium in Houston. And up next out of Oskaloosa, Iowa, Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger.
So Tyler has 23 points here, trying to ice another overall event championship, trying to get another freestyle win goes a long way in the series points. Yes, it does. And just because you win the championship or the event championship on each and every night doesn't mean that you get the maximum amount of points. Nice technical move from Tyler. But what that means is there's 12 points awarded for each competition, and if he can get the win in every single one, he can actually extend that points lead even more every single night. Three rounds so far on this series. Tyler has a freestyle win and a second and fourth place finish as well. So he has been consistent, but he says he's trying to still look for that perfect freestyle run and put something together here. Now he can do it on this track as we've seen in the past with him. Two freestyle wins, three overall event championships in eight starts at NRG Stadium. So he's done it here. He's got to do it now. Yeah, nice job from Tyler on getting onto that pod. His truck was a little crooked in the air. He actually turned the front wheels to take that little bit of an edge of that bounce off and got the truck down nice and sweet. Good saves from Tyler. He's definitely, that's one of his specialties. Hard landing on the front two BKT tires. He was able to pick it back up. And now swing a Grave Digger back around. Another backflip attempt here for Grave Digger. Goes a little far to the left. He gets a nice push. And he's going to land it back on the wheelie bar. Where else but on two wheels oh for Tyler Oh, my Menegan. gosh. Throws it in reverse. Throws it back and forward. He might have something bent on that right rear wheel, though. Looks like it's sitting a little funny. Tyler has full control here of this Grave Digger truck. Seconds ticking away. He's trying to beat John Gordon. Oh! Score goes off to the left. Great check at the end, rolling it over. And he's going to run out of room on top of that berm, so cannot make the save. It may not matter. Take a look at the replay. Tyler coming into this backflip. Slight bit of under rotation, but might have done that on purpose to get the combination move. Gets that thing in forward, then throws it back in reverse, then back in forward. Double combination move. Icing on the cake for that freestyle. 9.241 puts Tyler in second, our final competitor out of Paxton, Illinois. The professor of MJU, Tom Mentz in Max D. That Max D truck is actually a little bit different than all the other trucks. He has a front mounted motor and a few different things on the maximum destruction truck that actually, I think, makes it work better in these tackier dirt situations. A huge air onto the pod and a nice save. Tom Metz debuted this truck here in Houston back in 2003. Adam, all he did was come out and win freestyle. So the first time these Houston fans got to see this truck, they were able to see it win. Maybe the last time they see it, they get another one. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be really cool. This 2003 body is just so special to me in particular. This is the Tom Mintz Maximum Destruction body that I grew up with. It's cool flashback seeing this truck. Tom Mintz now going for the backflip off the container. He's able to get it, get some uh -oh. distance there from the ramp. Nice flat landing, 9.455 is the score to beat. Tom Mance now trying to gauge the throttle and get it pushed up, get the rhythm going on the center pod, and then back across the blue berm. Max D with a beautiful backflip, but we need a big wow moment if he wants to get that high score and win this competition. Turns the truck now facing the FMX ramp, gets some nice air, does a crease to wheels, nice landing, soft landing though. This time he goes for a bicycle and another jump to clear the track. Oh, he might go over here though, he's gonna go right into, look at that perfect parking spot though, <laughs> just sideways. So Tom Mance will end his night. Take a look at the super glue replay. Here he comes into that backflip ramp, gets a nice compression, like you said, off that backflip container, pushing him way out. But right here, I think he was one jump away from a freestyle competition win. Grabs those BKTs and ends up on the lid. Here's the final leaderboard. Bad Company gets the win. Grave Digger second, Max D third, Black Pearl, and then JCB Digatron. John Gordon gets his first win of the season. He is on the track with Leslie Mears. It was really a burner out there, John. And you know, you went after Cole, you saw him do that big flip. Was that kind of some inspiration or did you already have your run planned? You know, honestly, watching Cole's wild run and then that crazy reverse flip attempt, it got me pumped sitting in the truck. I tightened my seatbelts a few more clicks and I just knew I had to let her fly and do some crazy stuff. And that's exactly what happened, man. The race was awesome. We didn't come out how we wanted to, but the freestyle was even better and we came out on top. John's win moves him up the second, but Tyler Menega will win another event championship. Tom Mintz finishes third with 26, Megalodon 25, and JCB Digatron rounds out the top five. For Tyler, it's his fourth event win of the season. Let's head back to the track with Leslie.
So the freestyle competition here was crazy, and you really had to work for it to get those points to put on the board here for your fourth in a row overall event championship. Yeah, you know, sitting there watching the first couple runs, there was good runs that came out early, and honestly, they got scored fairly low. Uh, John Gordon came out, put on an awesome run, awesome back foot save, uh, and that took the lead. So basically, you know, there was a chance you could get over that, but you'd have to really, really do something. It's tough for me to freestyle on these tacky tracks. I like to carry that momentum through the corner, uh, and you can't do it. So I wasn't pleased with any of my freestyles this weekend, but we did get four in a row uh, to start 2024, and it feels awesome right now. That's it from Houston. Up next for us, we rejoin Stadium Championship Series West for two rounds in San Diego. We hope to see you there. For Adam Entignap and Leslie Mears, I'm Scott Jordan. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.